stiff arms of crap have a great good match right there. Fighting through contact, fighting through off the line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're supposed to football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition, the 18th edition of Blue It Splits. Uh, we're going to get right into the film. We're doing Bryce Hall today, uh, again, with the good friend of the, uh, the podcast, a former co-host, the, the part-time pinch hitter, uh, Marcus Coleman, who decided to say, you know, screw it, you know, COVID, all this shit going on. Uh, he's in space. He's, he's not even... He's not even <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Marcus? What's up, man? Hey, social distancing. Yeah, to the extreme level. <laughs> Take notes, people. Um, so, yeah, 18th edition. Uh, like I said, Bryce Hall. Uh, we're wrapping out the draft, guys. Uh, we got we got Bryce Hall, Beckton, next Clark, and then Morgan. And if it, for the people who are interested, um, we're, I'm gonna have some film. I found I, I found some film on most of the undrafted guys: Gidry, Jackson, Huff, uh, Campbell, and Cager. So if you're if you uh, want to check those guys out, I'll be doing shows on them um, as well uh reviews drop them we got a five-star rating i appreciate that um keep leaving the ratings and reviews we'll send you uh t-shirts and free subscriptions and all that stuff um but like i said we're gonna get pretty quick into the film because uh there's a lot to get to and marcus is a busy man as am i so we need to to get through this uh to read through his strengths and weaknesses um, which maybe I, I i don't know if i should start doing this marcus with you but maybe i should start reading them at the end so you could disagree with me uh, on some of them that I read, but uh, I'll, I'll do it at the beginning here. <clears throat> um, okay. so for, for me, cornerback uh, Virginia, 6'1", 202, uh, Pat in terms of pounds, uh, 32 and one-fourth inch arms, which is pretty solid for a corner. Uh, my strengths I put down, size, uh, high effort, praise for his leadership, uses length well, squeezes and widens well, uh, takes good angles, working up to upfield shoulder in different fr- uh, phases of coverage, likes to press, good recognition in zone, flashes, click and close, um, eyes low and press, which I like. Plays over toes, good burst of the ball out of pedal or shuffle. Uh, patient press, crowds or outbreaks. Best when using physicality and stem. Uh, can play press or cover three, four well. Likes to thump, willing and run game. Ball skills of a former wide receiver show. Plays with good balance, awareness, and wins 50 50 balls. That is the strengths that I wrote down. For me watching his film, the weaknesses that I wrote down. Uh, bad injury in which he fractured fibula. And I, you probably know more about injuries than I do, Marcus, so I want you to comment on, on this after I'm done reading the weaknesses. But uh, fractured fibula, dislocated ankle, which included torn ligaments in one play. Um, so that was in like last uh, October or something like that. So we have to hope he recovers quickly from that. Um, eyes go back to the quarterback too often, throwing him off wide receiver's track, which me and you both are major sticklers for uh, watching film with you for a while. Um, comes into tackles uncontrolled at times, needs to uh, break down sooner, take more consistent angles. Uh, too often plays in no man's land, being two, four, uh, two to four yards off the wide receiver in pre-snap. Uh, in off coverage, can see him open early instead of weaving. Needs the fight to maintain proper leverage and off coverage. Needs to play through wide receiver more consistently at next level as playing ball could lead to big plays uh, for opposition. Dropped interceptions he shouldn't have. Hips are a little tight. Feet can be a little bit clunky. Prefer him in press man than off man. Lateral quickness, long speed, ex- uh, acceleration when bailing. Um, that injury, though, I don't know if you're like too privy uh, about that injury, Marcus, but uh, fractured fibula, dislocated ankle, that includes torn ligaments all in one play. I believe it was against Miami on like a kickoff return or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. He basically snapped his ankle in half. So right. uh, do you think that's a bad enough injury where you can never come back for it at, at full strength? Or do you think, you know, the NFL being what it is today, that uh, with all the medical advances, he should be able to return back to full health? I mean, he, should, he can get back to full health. Uh, that's one of those injuries where it's going to take some time to actually – you know, get back to full strength and get back to full speed. You know, it's kind of, I mean, it's like, it's somewhat like how ACLs used to be. You know, ACLs used to be like four year and a half, two, you know, almost going on two years, you know, obviously, you know, with, with medical, you know, technology and the advances that, you know, doctors have made, you know, and now it's seven months, eight months, whatever it is now. But, yeah. but um, I mean, that's a huge injury because you're talking about two separate injuries and, I mean, you already have the dislocated ankle, you tear ligaments, and you, you know, you break your, you know, your fibula. That's, you know, those are two 
you know, this, you know, very distinctive separate injuries that it's going to take some time for him to get back to full speed and be able to, you know, find that expert, you know, find that burst, find the explosion that, you know, you had before he, he had those injuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that the bones heal well, uh, for me, I've, I've torn a couple of like, like I tore my, my, uh, what the hell is it called in your shoulder? Like I said, I'm a little bit gassed out from work. I, I tore my labrum. And for me, like it, once you let it heal and at a professional level, like obviously you have more experience, but it's more of like a pain management type thing with torn ligaments. But if you don't let it heal properly and it keeps tearing, then uh, right. you're screwed there too. Because once you have it, it's kind of always there. Um, mm -hmm. Have you had torn anything? Is that kind of the case with you? Yeah, like I mean, that's, that's actually, um, actually what I had. That was really the only main injury I had was I tore my leg room, oh, yeah, there um, you go. tore the ligaments, you know, in the back, mm -hmm. um, tore the tendon had bone chips. So I literally had to get, I got cut in the front and got scoped in the back because oh, okay. it was, you know, it was so bad. So, mm -hmm. but like you said, it's always still there and you yep. can strengthen it, get, you know, get the mobility back, but it's one of those things that's still there. And, and really depending on how they surgically repair, you know, his ankle, that may still be there, you know, that it's always yeah. going to be sore. He's always going to feel that, you know, the, the, fib the fibula will heal, you know, as it should, you know, because that's a big bone and it usually heals up pretty strong. Yep. The, the dislocated ankle, that could be something totally different because now you're talking about torn ligaments, um, you know, the dislocation. That's one of those things where it may constantly be there for a while. Yeah. And it's one of those things I noticed, like if you're if, if you're like basically like you're going into something cold, let's say. And you mm -hmm. like you act quickly, like let, let's just say, you know, whatever, like you're you're at a bar and your friend comes up with you and you start wrestling around a little bit. Right. Um, like in my case, then like my, my shoulder twinges a little bit. I'm like, damn, I, I tore, I tore that in my groin. I actually tore my labor, uh, my gym, you know, the, the pec deck machine in reverse, uh, to do your rear delts and the, the weight actually caught weights behind it. So I thought I was lifting a certain weight and like another hundred pounds was on it. I didn't know. And I ripped my labrum, um, mm -hmm. which was fun, <laughs> but it's something that you, uh, yeah, it just kind of acts up. So it, I think though, with, with him being on a team and, and getting it warmed up before the game and things like that in practice, he should, he should be able to get through it. But it's yeah. something that I think is always going to act up. You can't just completely heal from torn anything. But uh, we'll see how he heals. I think it was in like the last October or whatever it was that he that he got injured. Um, I don't have the exact date of it, but I, I think it was early in the in the football season. So hopefully, it can come back uh, for you know maybe July. Uh, maybe he comes in a little bit slow. Maybe like Bust Austin, where you know the first half of the season he's not really seeing a lot of time, and then midway through the season, you know he does see some time. So uh, let's watch his film because the the. Based on his film, uh, minus that injury, he he could have been, in my opinion, uh, early second, mid second, late late first. Listen, if guys like David Ornett um, and these guys are drafting this first round, based on Hall's film, if he didn't have an injury, I think he could have been uh, drafting the first round as well. And he's to the top right here. Um, I, I didn't necessarily want to start off with like a screen um, and recognition and things like that because uh, not this is not necessarily the flashiest play, even though it could be. Um, I thought that his awareness is, is, is really good. Um, mm -hmm. And so what are you seeing from on, on this play, Marcus, just the quick, just the quick like smoke route right here. And he's just, he's just jumping it. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is, I mean, just looking at the coverage, you know, I don't know everything that they play, but yeah, uh, usually, I mean, and we do this some at Trinity where, you know, if the corners out there <clears throat> and he sees a smoke route, you know, whether it's thrown or not, you know, his job is a, you know, first, you know, uses his instincts to take the wire, you know, take the wide receiver out immediately. Um, you know, so he does a good job of, you know, seeing the RPO, you know, reading the play and, you know, has a chance to make a play, you know, just got to finish, got to finish though. Yeah. That's the one thing that I, that I did mark in his weaknesses is plays like this in the NFL. This is the difference between a win and a loss in games, yeah. you know, that bringing this back for six, that could, that could be the game right there. And, you know, I don't know what the scenario was here. Um, a lot of the film I had, I wasn't necessarily able to, to see. Uh, thank you to somebody in this in this meeting for for getting me this film from an undisclosed uh, person. So, um, yeah, I definitely appreciate that. But yeah, he needs he he needs to make that play right there. So I'll, you can knock him a little bit for that. But um, let's keep going because, like I said, I, I I think to start there's a couple of not the greatest plays. Don't worry, this is not going to be an Ashton Davis repeat with Marcus Coleman. Uh, I'm going to gush a little bit over over Hall. I'm I'm not going to lie because I, I like him a lot. So. Um, Top of the screen here. Oh, no, sorry, bottom of the screen. I apologize. My thing was blocking it. This is a play where I, I marked it down as the, the no man's land right here, Marcus. Again, that, that two to four, four yards off, you can't really get your read steps in. You can't really uh, get your hands on very well. 
unless you're super patient with your feet. And he reaches for contact. Um, mm-hmm. The receiver is able to get inside. And then my problem with this play is too, is he continues to peek inside right here. At least it seems like he peeks inside right here. So he's not able to match. And he does end up getting uh, beat for the, for the touchdown right here. Yeah. I mean, again, just like you said, I mean, and I, then this is kind of how I played it, you know, every now and then when I would play press, if you're going to play off, you know, this far, <clears throat> you almost have to play it like soft, you know, you, you play it like soft players, but you play it like, you know, like you're playing, like you're catching. It's kind of the technique you want to play. But mm-hmm. in order to do that, you have to let the, the wide receiver, you know, basically come to you and you have to absorb, you know, any, you know, you know I guess any movement or, or momentum that the wide receiver is giving mm-hmm. you and still continue to move your feet while you're doing this. But here, you know, he's, you know, caught off balance because he's trying to lean. I've been saying that puts him behind, you know, and not to mention, you know, he doesn't, and he stops his feet right there. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. So once he's at that point, you stop your feet, especially with the wide receiver getting, you know, vertical into his route, it's over with it at this point. You know, but yeah. this, these, you can clean this kind of stuff up, though. Yeah, for sure. And this safety uh, doesn't really do his job right here. But my problem with that, too, is like, even after he's beat initially, He's looking. It seems yeah. like he's looking back, right. and you could you always you, you even you said like by that by that that line in the helmet it looks like he's looking back. So like if he was to like work towards this outside shoulder, maybe he can play the ball. But he kind of drifts underneath too, and he, and he allows himself to get stacked because he's looking into the backfield. Um, yeah. and he drifts and and you know gets beat for the touchdown. So um, I yeah, I, but that's like you. I mean, but like I said, that's fixable. Mm-hmm. You oh, know, yeah. Just, at, yeah, at that point, you just got to get on your horse and haul ass you know, and try to get to the field shoulder at that point. When you're yeah. beating, now you're just in catch-up mode at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I said, where I didn't intentionally start off bad. It's just the plays I looked at first were the, some of the bad ones. And, and listen, the first play was great recognition, uh, mm-hmm. great burst of the ball. He just dropped the interception. Right. So it's actually not a really bad play. It's kind of just like, oh, damn it, you should have caught the ball. So it's not like we're not going to kill him for that. So um, bottom of the screen right here. So... He gets the – or he does he drop the interception? Yeah, he drops the interception. So this is – the one thing I do like about his game, um, and I, I think the example is here too, you could tell that his eyes are low, which I mm-hmm. do like. He definitely yeah. – he's not a guy who's going to get juked out by, by, by stupid little head fakes and things like that. Now, here I, I'm assuming you're going to agree that you'd probably like to see him widen him a little bit instead of opening up right away. Yeah. Just, um, I, I mean, what I like to see is really he, his – he needs to work on his feet, period. Um, you know, and the, I know we've only seen two press clips, but yep. he's not moving his feet, you know, working whether it be vertically or laterally, you know, to stay in front of the wide out. Because you still got you to get yourself close enough to where you can make this jam. Mm-hmm. And initially, when he's trying to jam, he jams with the wrong hand. You know, you, you need to come across with your off hand. So you can, it's easier for you to turn. If you jam with your off hand, you bring your hips around naturally. Now you can get into a running, you know. What do you mean by the offhand? Just so people, just so, people who don't. So offhand. So he's playing. So here, well, it doesn't matter what side you're playing. So the wide receiver is releasing to his right. Mm-hmm. So the offhand is the opposite of where the wide receiver is releasing. So he should be jamming with his right hand, going to his left. If the wide receiver was going to his right, you want to jam with your left hand. So mm-hmm. that's the offhand. Is what we call it. Yep. So, and the thing is here too, that's a little bit risky is you see that the, the, the Jersey pole right yeah, there. Right. Um, and at this point, uh, looking back to the ball, like the way I was taught and not taught learned was when you don't have, when you have a lot of room, you know, all this room um, to the sideline and both vertically, you want to really work through the receiver, not back to the ball. Um, right. Now he is able to, you know, get jump the ball and almost get the interception here. But uh, the the problem with this play is the the initial, <clears throat> really the initial phase right here too is like, like you said, you want to see that offhand jam, mm-hmm. or just even if you are going to be aggressive, you know, if if he's to if he's to sh- get a shuffle in right here and widen this guy out, he's choking the route off to the sideline. Exactly. So. Right. He, he's in press and he's patient and, and things like that. And his eyes are low, but he doesn't take advantage of it because he doesn't really work his feet. So. Right. Let's, uh, I, mean, I know it's only a few clips, but <laughs> right now that's kind of the main thing that I'm seeing, mm-hmm. you know, with him, you know, it's just, you know, the feet, you know, the footwork, you know, working vertically or work, you know, working laterally, you know, to try to maintain your leverage and, and you and make, make sure he's in control of the wide receiver and not the opposite. Yeah. Okay. So top of the screen, um, he is in, uh, off man, it looks like here. And 
I, the one thing I do like about him in off coverage, even though sometimes he opens up his hips to me, I saw him be pretty patient with his feet. Like he's a guy who will open up a little bit. But the difference mm-hmm. between opening up and, and going hundred percent to into bail and just opening up a little bit. Um, so I like, I like on this play that he's opening up, but he's not getting into a full like bail. Now, the one thing that I did criticize a little bit, and you could obviously disagree with me, I would like to, st- I would like to see him stay a little bit more over top of the route and so, instead of so far inside. Um, just because you have that deep safety right there, and if he were to make a cleaner break, let's say, on a comeback, that's a lot of room to make up. Uh, do you agree with that, Marcus, or am I a little bit off base right there? Well, the, the thing is, is because of what they're playing, um, I mean, they're playing single high, and it's almost basically zero. I always thought a single high is zero. If you're a man, especially okay. if, like if you're in the slide, yes, you have a post safety, but more times than not, if you get in like crossers and things like that, that dude's never going to get there. You're basically on your own. Okay. Um, so, yeah. uh, so, so, I mean, if, you know, just based off of what, you know, I think it's Vanderbilt that they're playing based off of what this team may run, you know, you can decide how to work that leverage, you know, maybe you can play more head up and over the top, you know, if they, if you get a lot of digs, a lot of posts, you know, things like that. Um, you know, if Vanderbilt, they run a lot of comebacks, uh, hitches, things like that to the single side or even like slants, you know, you can, you know, play a little bit more inside, <clears throat> you know, just to protect yourself. Uh, the, only, the only thing I guess that I would like to see here, I really, I would like to see a little bit more pedal and not so much shuffle, because if you see the shuffle, jump Marcus right Coleman there. hates shuffle 2020. Well, I, yeah, I, well, <laughs> well, well, yeah, because it, it goes to what you don't like as well. Yeah. Sticking your foot in the ground, you know, running through the, you know, running through the ball. Here's that that last little hop at the very end. I don't, you know, if you right there, mm-hmm. you know, instead of just, you know, if you in a nice natural pedal, and then it's just like you're, you know, you take off just like you're, like yeah. you're running, you know, walking or throw that you, clean T step and get out. Yeah, just you know, a cleaner step coming out, you know, so he can get the, you know, he'll that's, that puts him a full yard you know, to where he can make a cleaner catch without the wide receiver interfering. Now, you know, he does that. I'm not sure what happens at the catch point here because it is, it is, you know, it's, it's kind of far away to see. I do like that he's playing with the inside arm right there, and it looks, and the, it looks like he's not swiping at it. Um, and I think you've said this before too, but it's, it's, it's a good point that you, you don't want to really swipe at the ball because if you swipe at the ball, your man was going down, down to the ground, right? And you're kind of limiting the, the window where you can hit the ball. Where if you're swiping down, you better be, you better be sure that the ball is going to come to that point at that swipe where if you, if you stab through right. the whole other second of, of you being able to potentially play that ball. So it looks like he's, he's, he's stabbing through with the hands, which yeah. is, I think it he plays like the ball he, pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, no, he plays the ball well. He, he's and I call it sticking your hand in the cookie jar. So stick your hand in the cookie jar. You yep. know, it's just it's just a straight grab, boom. You know, <laughs> yep. you know, and that's it. yeah. So uh, you know, but no, he's doing a good job of you know stabbing, uh, you know, going through the wide receiver's hands and, and trying to make you know make the catch. You just got to finish off though. Yeah, I marked I marked that down with his uh, with his hips um, on the on the top of that play, saying you know careful with his hips question mark because right. opening up like that. It, it really it really limits you minus running deep, you know, mm-hmm. because if they're breaking inside, you're going to have to speed turner being an elite athlete like Patrick Peterson. If they're, and even if they're breaking, you know, to the outside, it's not going to be as clean as a, a, of a T-step as you are if you're sunk into a nice, a nice back pedal, you know. So right. he does right. open up a little bit um, early for me sometimes. But let's see this. He's on the bottom right here. Um, he could pro- just initially off the bat, I would say he'd probably be a little bit tighter right here. They can see more at the 40 right here instead of, again, that, that yard or two off, which, you know, if he's playing, he, he, let's see if he, he probably soft presses. All right. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. He's, he's still, he's still reaching a little behind, bit of his feet. Yeah, he's still behind too much and he's not moving his feet. See, his feet, he's in the same place. Look at his feet. He's still literally in the same spot, you know, as a zero. You got to have movement when you're, you know, when you're playing press. You got to be able to move, you know, your feet, you know, whether it be going backwards or going sideways, you know, laterally. Mm-hmm. So this is that's the only thing I would say, you know, and that's why he's caught behind, you know, so far when we've seen him being pressed. Now, yeah, and and you don't want to be off balance. The one thing I did notice about this play is I can't see how how clear how clean that chop is from the receiver. The one thing I do like though is that he gets it looks like he gets chopped, but he doesn't lose balance, which is a positive. Mm-hmm. But he could have definitely played it better in terms of, like you said, with his feet because 
his feet are look they're, they're in cement at the beginning of this. Now he recovers right. well. You know, he, he, he gets his hands on, he doesn't lose balance. He plays the upfield shoulder. He matches, he runs that break with the receiver. Like yeah. he, he's, he's sticky on that. And again, he plays, it, it looks like he chops down at the elbows. Yeah. He gets his hand in there. I mm-hmm. mean, I mean, personally, if I'm a wide receiver coach, you got to catch that ball. You got two hands on it. It's in a good spot. One, he shouldn't be catching it at, at like a basket catch. He should be, you know, his palms should be facing, yeah, facing the ball. Yeah. And it's, it would be a catch, but <laughs> Mm-hmm. I mean, credit Hall on, on getting his hand in there and knocking it down. Yeah, for sure. All right, next play um, is, let's see, off man find a ball. All right, let's see what this one is. So I kind of freestyle it. I always plan like, oh, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, look at the play and the description before I never end up doing it. Kind of, I always just end up freestyling. Um, top of the screen. Okay. Um, so let's, let's watch this again. So again, off off man, um, cover one like a double hole, or it could be like a funnel. I heard some people say like, and, and this is just what I've heard. If there's a running back coming out of the backfield. These two guys are kind of yeah, playing like in and they, out on the running back. Like, yeah, they, they, just bang, they just bang on the running back. Yeah, funnel one. So um, I like that he's he's pretty patient right here, and then once he opens up, he is squeezing the guy to the sideline, which is which is a positive. Um, the thing is to me, if the ball were to be at a six. better trajectory, it could be six right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. It's six. Well, I mean, go back, go back to the very beginning. I just want to see where he's lined up. I'm, uh, he's inside right and off. Okay. So he's about six and a half, seven. He's not bad. He's got it, but he's got to be, he's got to, I mean, he's really, he really needs to gauge the wide receiver speed a little bit more. So he's finding this pedal, and, he, and actually he needs to turn a little bit earlier, to tell you the truth. Yeah. He's about, a, about a half a step too late, you know, in turning. Because like you said, if this, if this is a good, you know, a well-thrown ball, that's probably six. Mm-hmm. Now, this is – I thought, like, so on this play, like, you could see a little bit of the deep speed lacking. Like, it's only for, yeah. like, a split second, but it, it does show up a little bit. Like, he's not an, he's not an elite top-end speed type guy. Mm-hmm. But um, there are plenty of guys who are not top – flight guy speed guys like Richard Sherman's a perfect example uh, of a guy who is not a a top flight speed guy and is still really successful in the league um to me and this is after watching a lot of film I I think he's like a like a he I think he could play in press man um I think in in a situation like a three or four where he's asked to play over top of guys I think that's where he's going to be pretty good too like not letting guys beat him over the top yeah um playing off but I, I don't – cover two, like cover two people. Like a lot of people think, okay, bad athletes in playing cover two. Cover two, you're asked to cover a lot of ground yeah, just in an sure. intermediate area. That's the, probably one of the biggest myths out there. Yeah. Being, being able to be a, a zone corner or a cover two corner. I mean, and it's fine if some guys are, you know, man guys or, or coverage guys. But I'll give you a prime example. Um, and now I just lost his name. What was the dude that um, – was the corner in Oakland and then with the Philly. Asimov? Yes. Okay. Nandi, Nandi. Yeah. Perfect example. Leave him on one side, lock him up all day. Great. Get to Philly, start having to play in the slide, you know, reading two or three guys at one time, you know, covering, you know, being able to cover different zones and, and things like that. Horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so that's, you know, Nandi is a gr- really good athlete. You know, he really is. And is probably one of the fastest dudes that I know. So that's, that's a huge myth, you know, bad. You, you're asked to do so much, not just in pass coverage, but in run responsibility when you're, yeah. you know, a cloud corner is ridiculous. So no, that's, that's a huge myth. Yeah. People, a lot of people say that. And like, that's something I, I noticed quickly is like cover two corners going from like, even like, let's think like a smash concept, like staying under that, that, that smash route, that corner route and jumping on the hitch like that, you need to cover a lot of like, ground. In yeah. cover too, so a lot, a lot yeah, it more. might not be deep coverage and things like that, but that that short intermediate area is it, it's you need you need to be an athlete to play in cover two. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think like a press man, I, I think cover three, cover four, um, where he's asked to t- stay over the top of guys, I think he'd be good in that. Cover two, I don't necessarily think he's an athlete for it, but at at the end of this play, I do like that he obviously finds the ball and is able to to make the interception on the sideline. Um, yeah. Which is good, but like we said, uh, you said that he opens up a probably a split second late right here, and if the ball is 
put at the I don't know where they end up right here let's say the ball is put at the you know the, the 30 or the 25 between that area then he might be beat for six so yeah. um next play covers oh yeah i remember this one i think i i put this one in here literally because, literally because really excited so really excited about that no no i actually put this in here because i remember seeing becton on this play shove a guy into the ground after the ball is intercepted so that's kind of why i put it but so, i like the recognition in this play I, I i think i remember um looks like cover six to me he looks like he's a cloud guy um yeah it seems like it now yeah, to the top. Now, my criticism yeah. with this would be – Damn the dude. Reroute him. And if, yeah. <laughs> are, and if you are playing cover two, funnel him inside. Don't want him to get outside exactly. of you because that makes the, the safety's job harder. Exactly. So, so that's my one criticism of, of this play. So if anything, go outside in, not, not inside out on, 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 that, on the cloud look. Now, I do like that he, he gets underneath because there is no, no number two threat uh, breaking mm-hmm. out his way. So he, he, he gets underneath. And then he notices the quarterback throwing to the to the crosser from the uh, the slot guy, and then he gets over top of that and makes the pick. So I like yep. the recognition right there. I don't like the initial phase. Yeah, no, I mean really good eyes on the back end. But yes, I mean, and this could this should have been super easy. I mean, just by the split of the wide receiver, you should have already been outside. I mean, I mean, you know, that's you know, and I'm usually I'm kind of hard on on my DBs about alignment, especially if the receiver, you know, basically kind of if he, if he gives it to you in regards to what your responsibilities are so if you're in two you want to follow everything to the safety well if he's lined up three yards from the you know the inline guy he's already helped you out you know now at this point if he releases outside all you got to do is rewrite him but mm-hmm. um even down the field knowing that he doesn't have a, a second man you know a second a lower level player i should say you know will it be a running back out in the flat or somebody like that and having good eyes and, and breaking up on the ball is, is that is really good because you need that, you know, especially in two, just like like we just discussed. Yeah, this 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 point right here, I def I definitely like him jumping over top of that, um, for for sure. But, um, the the initial like leverage thing, I don't I don't get, it. I don't I don't know what happens in a game. I, I was never in college getting coached, but like, it seems like a pretty simple thing to maintain outside leverage when you're a cl- when you're a cloud guy and get a reroute instead of him, kind of angling off to the outside with inside leverage when you have a cover two, when you're trying to funnel him into the safety. It, so I don't know what went on there. If that was just like a mental lapse or what he's being coached, but um, let's look at the next play here. Uh, bottom of screen. This is one I criticized him for, where he's opening a little bit early and he gets beat to the outside. I labeled it. Um, and again, yep. it I looks like his, and his eyes are in the backfield as soon as he opens up. Oh yes. Yeah. He's staring at the quarterback. Mm-hmm. If you hey, if you see the quarterback throw it more times than that, he's going to catch it. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah definitely needs to that's what I say if he's more if he stays square and stays more in a pedal um even if he is on coverage you still got to know where the wide receiver is um and I, I think that is oh, kind of yeah. what you know they are in zone coverage but you still you can't just start staring back at the quarterback even though you're in zone coverage you mm-hmm. got to know where the wide receiver is especially on the stem wait till he clears the initial you know I, I call it the initial phase of of the route, which is usually that four to six yard area. And then you can start looking back, you know, once, you know, everybody's dropped back in their zone, but here he opens up too early. He's already standing at the quarterback and he gets beat on, you know, like you said, on a comeback route. It's easy. Yeah. It's um, like at this point, like you said, like stay in that pedal, like what, and that's like, what I always talk about weave is like basically a pedal, but you're just, you're moving side to side, but you're right. pedaling. And that's the, I, I like to see him weave here. Um, mm-hmm. When you're this far off, like he, even if he wasn't looking back at the quarterback now, it makes him relax, uh, react like a, a half a second late. But even if his eyes were on the guy right here, it, unless the guy's a, a piss poor route runner, he's beat like no matter what, especially the NFL yeah. level. So he needs to fix that up on that play. Um, yeah. So he does get beat uh, on that. I believe that was for a first down. Um, next play. This is a, if I remember correctly, a absolutely ridiculous interception. Um, Bottom of the screen, yeah. I, I think I like this play a lot, Marcus. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. That that I I remember. Yeah. Okay. I like this a lot. Um. So again, he's he's in like that soft shoe type coverage. I like that even though like he's not a guy. Even when he's getting into a backpedal a little bit, I like how his chest is still over his toes. Like he's not a guy yeah. who hops back on his heels and he's really off balance. So maybe you'd like to see him get like an extra shuffle in here, not open up immediately. So that could be a slight criticism, but I mm-hmm. do like the length right there, getting the right arm on the shoulder. 
uh, right. working that shoulder. And then once he sees the receiver look back for the ball, he looks back for the ball, which could be a little bit risky with this much room to, to if we're being completely honest. But I really, really like this part where he, he transitioned his, his right arm, that contact, to his left arm. And then he jumps up for the interception. And then yeah. he's and, and at this point, I had a replay of it, but his hand and, and the receiver's hand are both on the ball right here, and he just rips that away and down, and he gets oh, it. Oh, no there. doubt. Well, no, and that's part of, you know, him being a former wide receiver, you know, having the ability to, you know, to attack the ball and, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and make these kind of plays, you know, potentially. So, but yeah, I mean, honestly, at the line, I thought he was okay. The only thing that I would have liked is, you know, once, and I think the feet are good, actually good here. He's good. He's, you know, he's working back, you know, kind of in the soft press. When the wide receiver makes his move there, stab him. So you widen him out. Just go ahead and, and instead of opening his, up, yep. Yeah, instead of just opening up and, and letting him, you know, and running. Stab his, you know, stab his butt and then widen him out. So now you really give yourself an easy chance to, to make the interception. Because just think about it. If he if he stabs the wide receiver and widens him out a little bit and this ball is still thrown in the same place, that's a I mean, the pick is much easier, mm -hmm. you know, than yep. than what it is. So but even so, he opens the gate, and that's fine. He does a good job of getting back in phase. But like you said, just be careful looking back too early with this much room. I mean, that's, you know, that's probably about you know, five or six yards. That's probably like a good four to five yards, I should say, that the wide receiver has, has like to a the sideline. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it could be you know, fate. You know, if, he, if the quarterback throws the ball where he's supposed to, which is high into the outside, you know, this is probably a catch or now, even back, or even back shoulder. It's probably, you know, it's possibly a catch. Yeah. Now, like I said, I do, I do like the little thing right here of, of that right hand transitioning to the left hand with contact. Cause like mm -hmm. you always want to be able to feel the receiver. I think that's what he's doing. And even when you're just throwing your arm up like that, like, okay. So if, if, if the receiver was to try to work up to the ball, if he has his left arm on top of the receiver, it's going to be hard for the receiver to jump up through that arm. Like it's, it's really, it's almost impossible. So I, I like his hands right here. Um, and then obviously the pick right there. That's 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 as that's as ridiculous as it gets to be oh, yeah. honest. No, that's a that's a, a really athletic play. Yeah, yeah, that's a super athletic play. So um, there's definitely and, and a lot of these plays like that were, that I think that we're fairly criticizing are still like good plays for a college player. But in the NFL, you got to fix it up. At, but overall, through ten plays, I, I definitely like his game. You know, even talking about it with you. Um, so he's at the bottom right here. Um, I believe this is going to be like a. Actually, I don't even know what this. Let's see. So it looks like cover, maybe co uh, cover three. Yeah. Yeah, cover three. Um, yeah, cover three. So he. I want to see how patient he is with his hips in full speed right here. Again, like I, so I really I like this play too. Um, so he might open. He like I I think he opens up at at a pretty proper time. He stays over top of the route. He doesn't get into like a full pedal. He doesn't. He doesn't bail like quickly. Like he's like if you watch again for the people who are watching on on the YouTube. You know when we put this up, you see he, like he's pretty patient with his feet right there, and then he's able to. Oh God. Oh no. Go ahead. No, I finished. I go afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So I just think that like yeah, he's opening just in case the receiver is to run a a skinny post, a post, the nine, whatever it may be. Um, but he's not panicking until he's going to get closer to even with him, which allows him to really do a good job, especially for a guy who is six one. And I, I call them, he's a little bit leggy where he has, he's a really long legs. He gets out of his break pretty quickly, works the upfield shoulder, finds the ball, then undercuts the route and almost picks off again, but he drops the interception. Yeah. I mean, I, I do like the patience, especially in off coverage, knowing, um, that you have somebody underneath so you can be, a, you can be more patient. Uh, you know, that kind of, the coverage mm -hmm. kind of adds to that. Again, the only thing I don't like is I don't like the opening up too fast and jump and get into a shuffle mm -hmm. because here, so now, and if you go back and look at the receiver, the receiver's telling him what he's going to do. I mean, if you just watch the route, the receiver, now he starts to raise up. You can tell he's getting ready to break down right here. You know, especially. Oh yeah, for sure. Receiver, yeah. Come high. Like that's a, yeah, that's, that's, that's a dead giveaway. If he's more on a pedal, and he just, whether it be, you know, quarter step or T-step, whatever you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. he's, he's got a more, he can drive down at the ball at a more, at a better angle, you know, and make these, you know, make these INTs easier. You know, and I know it's a bad throwing ball, it's behind the guy, but yeah, I mean, it's easier to break, you know, coming out of your pedal than shuffling, you know, just because again, if you look at the end before he makes the break, 
see that arm go up and now he's like he's flying and he has to take that jump step to get into yeah, a break. Yeah, we always talk about like having your feet crossing and like off right. the ground. This whole motion right here is wasted movement. Exactly. Instead of just being in the pedal, boom, boom. And now you're just driving on the ball. You know, that's, you know, that's something, you know, he's going to have to get out of. Because, I mean, honestly, wide receivers in the league will eat him up on that. He'll never be able to, he'll never break a ball if he's playing like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, you know, eight times out of 10, it won't happen. Now, just going to the the break, um, he, again, is a leggy guy. Watching this in full speed again, what do you, what do you think about that break for a guy who, who is as big as, as he is? Uh, we said uh, 6 one, 207, whatever it is. No, he's, he's a relatively he's, big corner, but that's a good break for a big yeah. corner. Yeah. No, he, he's he's got the explosives in him. Like he can he explodes out of his out of his break. The burst is good. Um, so you know that's you know hopefully he can get back to that after the injury. But like I said, that'll take a little time. But no, being that size and having that ability to to you know burst out of his breaks is you know that's that's crucial. Yeah, yeah. I, I think like I said in off coverage, and that was one of the things I read before. He start he does open his hips up a little bit too soon. Where you're saying like more of that, more of that weave backpedal, which, which leads to cleaner breaks. Um, yep. And also allows you to play the outside a little bit better too, um, yep. or anything, really anything better minus vertical routes. But um, all right. So this is a flat. He's on the bottom right here, Marcus um, yeah. in press. So this is a, again, could there be some things cleaned up in, in initially right here? Yeah, but it, it is a little bit nitpicky, but um, at the NFL level, you got to be a little bit nitpicky. But even though he is in that soft shoe and he's only taking you know a couple steps back, again chest over toes. But mm -hmm. now we're going to talk about the same thing. He doesn't get a hand on and he opens up right away. Now, even though he does do that, he does a good job working the you know the near shoulder and and widening out that route and squeezing him to the sideline. Yeah. He, no. Like, it, oh god. I mean, yeah, and this one is similar actually to the to the interception that he made. It's almost identical. The only difference between this one and the the previous play that we looked at is he actually even and it doesn't matter if it's two yards down the field or three yards down the field. What he does is, you know, once the wide receiver you know gives him the go that he's running vertical, then he widens it, and you can see the the, the yeah. difference. You know, from this one as compared to the last one. You yeah, know, he starts the, at the top of the numbers and he, yeah. he gets them all the way. And he's pretty much pinned to the sideline. Side yeah, I mean, and that's what you want. That's a good job. So now that you know, wide receiver only has probably a half a yard or a yard to work with, you know, and that's a tough throw. I mean, even for NFL quarterbacks, that's a tough throw. Now, when the ball is in the air here, so once he initiates contact, what are your what are your thoughts on on this section of the play from like thirty to the twenty? Because he does look through the receiver, but then he kind of loses the the ball right here. Um, well, yeah, but what you want to do is. Once he starts widening them out, now you want to make sure that you establish being in phase. So he's still too busy, like, trying to hand fight with the wide out. You don't have to do that. You've already killed the wide out uh, at the beginning in the first five to ten yards already. You, you know, did a good job staying square. You widened them out. So you, you made the, you know, the, you know, the area to have the ball thrown in very small. So now you want to work on getting in phase you know, with the wide receiver and looking back for the ball. But you got to keep running when you're doing that. So here, once he – he's still hand fighting with the guy for no reason at all. You know, th there's no, no reason to even do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I would – you know, if I was coaching him, I would say, hey, you don't have to hand fight with him, you know, you know once you're down a feeling you've already widened him out. Now you can get in phase and start looking for the ball. All right, so we have the bottom um, here. Oh, yeah, I forgot my joke. I was like, I put on my Rebus jersey today. I was like, oh, I'm going to tell a corny joke that Hall is going to be as good as Rebus, but I, for, I forgot. Yeah, whatever, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay, so bottom of the screen. Um, gee, I got I to – this is one of those um, – this is one of those coverages I've had to watch a freaking billion times to understand what this is. Uh, but – Maybe it's like a cover. Maybe oh, it might be like a like a. Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. I don't know what they're playing because the corner looks like he's playing two. The safety looks like he's playing four. <laughs> I'm talking about at the top, and then and then who the hell is this guy and what is he doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's doing. So yeah, I, I don't know what they're doing. Okay, so yeah, this is one of those plays where I say. Uh, how do I, I'll, I'll word this something like because people are like, oh, you don't know what coverage it is? You tell me what coverage this is. It's it's hard. So he's responsible for this guy, we're going to say. <laughs> so um, 
this is another one of those scenarios. And again, look, and, and really <clears throat> we can criticize the beginning, uh, you know, again, um, instead of widening, he opens, which is an mm-hmm. issue. Again, I do yeah. like that his chest over his toes and things like that. So it's pretty similar to the, the plays we've been seeing. I like that he starts to squeeze him though. He doesn't just, he's not a guy who's just going to open and run down the field with you and give you a lot of like a ton of room. So he does, he does really work to widen guys. So I like that portion. But now he looks back to the ball, which is which is an issue. He he gets the uh the, this this ball. Now yes, is he forcing the receiver to make a ridiculous you know really hard catch? Yes, but at the same time, it's in his palm. And he should have caught this. Yeah, I mean the the thing that I would say go back to the beginning for me, if you don't mind. All right, you're and I know college has you know a wider than NFL hashes, but the the wideout is lined up inside the numbers. Uh, usually if a wideout is lined up inside the numbers, you want to play more head up the outside anyway. Because they want to go outside. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and obviously the wideout, obviously because of this route, he's trying to give him some more room, you know, to work, you know, running that go route. Um, I don't think he's too bad at the beginning. I'd like to see, obviously, more, you know, footwork. No more stuff, limits. but it's necessary in the NFL. Yeah, I'd like to see, I'd like to see him, you know, move his feet more. Mm-hmm. And then here – the thing that gets most DBs, even DBs in the league, in trouble is when you get in phase with the wide receiver, uh, you have to, while you're running, you have to push back while you're running so you can maintain your full speed, if that makes sense. It's, mm-hmm. um, I can't remember what the scientific reason for it is. I actually like, looked it up, and that's how I figured it out. So when you're running, so think of, think of when you're driving. All right, if you're driving and you're going straight, but if you start looking to the left, the car starts drifting to the left because that's the way you're looking, right? Yeah, your body goes where your eyes are looking. Exactly. So it's the same thing. So if you're running, um, you got to push back so you can, A, you stay in, you maintain the speed that you're running at because, it, you know, normally when you look back, you lose half a step. So you're running, you have to push back while you're running, and that allows you to maintain your speed, and it keeps you closer to the wide receiver and keeps you running downfield to be able to track the ball. You know, and that's what I see here, you know, at the end. Because he's fine here being in phase. You just got to keep running, keep pushing back, working through the receiver so you can give yourself a chance to make a play on that outside ball. Mm-hmm. All right, next play, play 13. Uh, this is a not a good play from Hall. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh. He, uh, <laughs> top of the screen. Yep, so he's shuffling. Got a pedal. Yeah, that's what happens when you shuffle. I mean, more times than not, that's what happens when you shuffle, especially on intermediate to deep routes. You especially, especially shuffling and then looking back to the ball, not through the receiver, is my problem with this play. Right. Yeah, and especially in the red zone, because of where the wide receiver, with the route that the wide receiver ran, yeah, just turn into the wide receiver. So now, because you know, get over one, top of this, choke it off, and then play yeah, the ball. Because you know, you can only get two balls. You either get. In, a true goal ball or you get in the back, you know, I mean, you know, that's, you know, that's really the only two things that you have left. So really I would like to see him turn into the receiver and be able to play this back shoulder ball, you know, or keep running with the right receiver. If he's, you know, if the quarterback throws it like a normal goal route. Yeah. He needs, I, I think he really needs to play for the receiver on that one. Um, that's one of his issues is, like I said, knowing when to play through the receiver or, or you know, play back through the ball and, and when you have that, that, that good squeeze on a guy. Um, okay, I don't know. I labeled this Hull, no OZ, no number two, no catch, though. <laughs> it's just kind of how I watch film. I just label it random crap. So Whatever that means. Let's see what this is. <laughs> um, okay, mm. so this, yeah. is, this is one of those cover uh, – looks like they're running like another like cover six right here. Yeah, they're yeah, playing two at yeah. the bottom and, and four up top. Yeah, people call it 42. People call it six. I call it yeah. six. Again, though, similar as last time, why is he not going out? So I, that's what I meant, no outside leverage, no number two. So that's why he comes under. So right. He goes Man. back to match it, but he didn't widen him out. So now the safety's not able to get there, and that's why he makes a catch on the sideline. Exactly. You, line, just line, I mean, the wide receivers, look where, he's, look where the wide receivers lined up. Just lined up outside. He basically gave it to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now, and especially here, knowing that you don't have a number two threat, and this is just what I used to do. If there wasn't a running back lined up to my side where I wasn't immediately threatened by anything in the flat, mm-hmm. I'm doing everything I can to dog choke the hell out of that dude. Because you yeah. know you got a safety over the top, and you know you don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, reading, you know, reading one to two. 
you know, in this instance, with, with somebody come out in the flat. You try to do everything you can to jam the hell out of this wide receiver. You know, but here, this yeah. isn't really a, a, a reroute. You know, like I said, the alignment's bad. Then he just kind of lays his hand on him. That's not really a reroute. The wide receiver doesn't even, doesn't even really get affected, you know, because he's just laying his hands on him and, you know, he throw the whole shot. I, yeah, I would I, – yeah, the turkey hole. Um, <laughs> that's what people call it. That's what I've heard yeah. of the turkey hole. So, yeah. if anything, I would almost like – like, even if he does screw up this foul, I would see him, if I was a coach, be on the outside and be too aggressive with the jam and miss that way, make him, yes. making him break inside, <clears throat> then being softer on the outside, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. You don't have a thread. Yeah. You can try to punish him as much as you can. Yeah, and, and like, listen, even if there, and, and even if there was a two-threat – rally and make the tackle don't let the guy beat get, get behind you you know like right. let him get three four yards and make the tackle that's okay but but letting him get to the outside of you and not helping your safety like funneling onto that safety he needs to fix that right there right. So that's, that's multiple times we've seen that i think we might see that again in, in the in coming up but uh let's see the next one a uh, quick gather and contest so i remember talking about the, I, I remember this play i think he's like another good break for for his size okay mm-hmm. So, are you going to criticize the, the, the shuffle? shuffle? Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. I mean, because here's the thing that the shuffle does. Just based off of my experience, when you're shuffling, you, you, it really it speeds up your clock faster than what it needs to be. Because if uh, the wide receiver is giving you the illusion that he's going to run, you know, run anything deep, so now you got to turn and get on your horse so you can get ready to go. Um, and also, somebody his size, which and I'm comparing her to me because, I mean, I'm 6'3", and, you know, he's 6'1"-ish or whatever it is. But for tall guys, you got to make sure that you stay as low as you can and have your feet under you as much as you can. But because you're shuffling, now, look, he's kind of out of whack if you look at his body. You look at his arms. He's throwing his arms everywhere, throwing his arms everywhere. He's reaching and grabbing. Like, you want to keep, you know, as the – you want to have your movements – you know, as fluid as possible without all the waste in motion, you know, trying to come back. But the thing about him is, is because he is so explosive, you know, coming out of his breaks, you know, he makes up for a lot of that, you know, just because he has that burst. Mm-hmm. So he can, you know, so he can, he gets away with it, you know, at least here, in, you know, in the college level. Now, you know, you can't get away with that at the NFL level, but at least in the college level, he got away with it knowing that he has that. Yeah, and I think like, for a guy like him, like if he were to fix that leverage issue, he had, well, the leverage issue, one, opening up his hips too early um, and gets and he just completely gets rid of that shuffle, um, I think he it would show up even more his, his short area explosion because like, he's not a guy who necessarily has the best long speed, but getting in and out right. of his brakes for a big guy or a taller guy, he's pretty pretty impressive in that, in that yeah. area. So, um all right, so this is another – he doesn't get the – does he get the pick here? No, he doesn't get the – or actually, does he? Hold on. He didn't look like it. No, he doesn't get the pick. So, another um, – this is a – this is a weird – this is a weird coverage, too. Uh, no, they're just playing double the slot. Oh, they're just they're – just, they're so, bracketing so, that inside? So yeah. So, yeah. they're doubling the slot. Up top, they're playing two – and, you know, he's – I mean, so basically it's like solo or it's like um, a version of two skill is what some people call it. Like Alabama runs it. There's a couple of, te- you know, teams that run it, and they run it with different ways depending on, you know, who you have in the personnel. Mm-hmm. So. So, so another scenario, um, he does like that man – people say man turn, zone turn. I, I think that's a little bit overblown sometimes. Where There's sometimes where your zone turn you're, – you're, you're turning – to the outside even in zone coverage like people people will automatically label it, okay well if he's turning to the outside it's, it's man or if he's turning to the inside it's zone that's true in most cases but it's not always true um but here um okay so the one thing i do like he, he is he is getting to that shuffle again pretty early i, mm-hmm. I would say you know yeah uh which i you're, you're you hate shuffle so no matter when you see the shuffle marcus coleman hates it <laughs> so he opens up um the one thing i do like though is once he does open he again he works to to get contact with the receiver and then mm. you can see that he anticipates hands from the receiver and it looks like he goes with his right hand right here to chop down yeah no and i, I do I like that yeah I, I do like what you know getting back in phase you anticipate the wide receiver you know trying to get his hands on you or and look at the wide receiver's room that catch yeah so so i do like that the only thing that i 
don't like that a lot of coaches teach, you know, to, D, to DBs is when they get in phase, they tell them to lean as opposed to just running. Mm -hmm. So if you, you understand what I'm saying, see how he's leaning here instead of just continuing to run, it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. If you're pushing back, you know, you run pushing backwards so you can maintain your speed. That's the only thing that I, I mean, but that's me. And that's just, like I said, that's a personal preference and, that's what's worked for me when I play in and, you know, it's worked for our kids when I coach it. So, um, you know, and I know some other guys that, that teach the, you know, teach it that way. Um, I don't necessarily like the leaning part of it because the lean one, you lo you're losing speed. And two, if this ball is thrown a little further or if the wide receiver does something, you know, because you're going to be off balance now, you know, if you're leaning as opposed to just having every, your, your feet under you and your hips under you and, mm -hmm. and running through. But I mean, you know, it's a – I don't want to call it an underthrown ball. You know, it's a, a decent ball, and he's able to still make a play on it. You know, but I do like how he gets back in phase, you know, and, and, and you know, gets – you know, establishes himself in phase. I just like to see him continue to run, you know, when he does that, though. Yeah, um, and I think that's a good point. Um, I do definitely like the fact that the receiver who, who drifts a little bit, but he takes them all the way from the bottom of the numbers, literally – to when he goes yeah. up to jump through the ball, he's almost out of bounds. Yeah. So um, that's a good part of his game. Uh, that's, that's something that, that Revis was famous for, squeezing the guys to the sideline, literally using that sideline as a second defender because that's what it is. Um, so top of the screen right here. Okay, so he's a little bit more he, – so he, he doesn't shuffle. He doesn't really shuffle here. He angles off a little bit. Um, yeah. And it looks like he's reading the drop of the of the quarterback. At least it looks like that to me. So I think I think he's looking back inside right here, and he sees the res the, the quarterback's like quick drop like that. Yeah. Um, and it, so he anticipates the break coming, uh, breaks in the ball, and then I like that he, he plays with the right arm. That's the, that's like the perfect way to play that ball out, out you know outside arm wrapped around him, and uh, chop through the ball right there. Yeah, I mean, well they're playing too. So I mean, he does a good job. They're disguising it. If you go back to the beginning, the safeties get out too late. Yeah, both yeah, of them. yeah it's like but, Tampa. Yeah, but yeah, but they're playing too. So you know he does a good job. They start off with the disguise, but you know he does a good job shuffling, reading the quarterback. You know, making a break on the ball. Yes, and and reaching with the near hand, going for the ball instead of trying to come through. You know, with the far hand. You know, and trying to knock it down and miss. Yeah, you, know, you which miss, is, and you're which is <laughs> yeah, which is what happens a lot. So your safety's gonna be quite mad at you the next yeah. day. <laughs> Because if you miss, like you said, if you were to go with that outside arm, you miss that ball, then yeah. then you have a situation where it's where it's a foot race up the sideline with that with that safety. So you're putting exactly. your safety in a shitty spot. Yep. Um, so good job playing the ball right there. Uh, let's see the next one. PD eyes back early. Uh oh. Uh, bottom of the screen. Okay. Um. So this was like kind of good and bad. I I think that when I broke this down. Yeah, I mean, because pedal, which is which is good. He's exactly that's what. Yeah, he's good in his pedal. So he's, he does makes a good break. The only thing I this is the problem. Look at me, yeah, don't exactly. Why are you staring back at the quarterback? Mm -hmm. So that's this is all. This is all good. He's 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 in the back pedal. His feet are under his frame. He angles off a little bit, but it's nothing that's gonna kill you. Uh, mm -hmm. He stays over top of the route. Works the upfield shoulder. Gets hands on looks back but then at this point once he pushes off like that like your eyes got to snap back then like now now they're you're back to the receiver this whole his eyes are still back to the quarterback yep so uh yeah, that's that's an issue yeah you, you got to get back you know even before you drive and yes he luckily he gets back because the wide the quarterback's trying to throw yeah. from the other numbers to mm -hmm. the far hash <clears throat> so he's able to get a break back on it but no he, even if you get, you know, pushed off or there's a little bit of separation, which happened here, you still got to, and our coaches drive, drive, you got to go man them ball, man them ball. So you got to get back to the man all the time. You got to always get back to the man before you start looking back like that. We've talked about it so much um, that I like really the only time to look back is when you have contact, <laughs> you know? Right. So yeah, he, he makes the play on this ball and, you know, good job, like, you know, initiating contact, like as the ball is coming, all that stuff. But um, I, so I like like three fourths of this play, just not this, this whole part right here. Is it, right. Exactly. So um, <clears throat> there, I, I don't think like there's, there's rare corners who like you could watch a whole rep and be like, they can't improve this little part of it, you know? 
Right. No, uh, no doubt. I mean, yeah, but, it happens on every play. But at the NFL, he's going to get beat more because it, you need to be near, near perfect in the NFL to, to not, get, not get beat. So <clears throat> um, he's on the bottom right here again. Um, another – it looks like another cover three. Yeah. But, kind of, yeah. but this guy's yeah. tripped me up and a little that, bit. Yeah, they're playing three. The safety's late as hell getting to the middle. Yeah, they like, yeah. Yeah, but they're playing – yeah, they're playing three. Because even, like, the top corner, you got the flat guy, you know. But this is where you talk about, like, people like, oh, okay, well, he's automatically in man, but he's play, he, he's, he's, he's man turning, but he's still in his zone coverage, unless they're just matching that one-on-one no matter what. I don't, I don't know. It looks yeah, like no, he, he, no, here he should be zone turning and playing outside. He actually screwed up. Yeah. I don't, so I don't know who's like, because it, it's weird that he keeps playing zone coverage with inside leverage like this. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's, I don't understand it either. Yeah. But again, he does do a good job of, and so his eyes are inside and it looks, so his eyes are inside. He, the, this guy runs like a stop and go. And he he sees the quarterback not look his way, so I think he feels that 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 vertical is coming. So I like his awareness right here. Yeah, yeah, no, he does a good job of doing that, of feeling that. Yeah, the peripheral vision to see. Okay, he's breaking. The quarterback's not looking this way. He's not throwing the ball here, so he's he's running like a stop and go. And then again, from the bottom of the numbers, chokes it off, or he he widens him at least all the way to the sideline. And this in this scenario, I'm pl- I'm fine with him playing the ball, and he en- he ends mm-hmm. up jumping up and make and making the interception. Yeah, no, either the play is great. Uh, the only thing that I would say is just here. I mean, I know he's in zone, and he's reading the quarterback. Just, just I would just like to you you want to make it as easy easy on yourself as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you're playing three, you know the slant's taken away already by the by the by this wheel linebacker down here. Go ahead and play head at the outside. So you don't have to even okay if he runs a stop and go, then you're on top. If he runs a stop, the flat guy's tackling him, and now you're tackling him. But just you want to, you know, the thing, you know, when when you get up to the next level is you want to make everything as easy and as fluid as possible, you know, without making it difficult, you know, to to do some of this. So yeah, but I mean, great play to make it in the INT. I mean, it's not always going to be perfect. You can't take it, you know, take that away. But there's always coaching points, you know, especially you know in the secondary for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's and that's not. It's not gonna. Be, it's like I think secondary is like it's a hard transition. I think really, yeah. honestly, like every position's hard. Like you know, like, I would say probably the easiest transition. Uh, I I guess you could say running back, but it's still not easy. Like it's you might see, right. you might see a guy's hat outside in that in that you know. Okay, you look at the B gap. You know, you have the five text hat outside. But he's baiting you, you know. Exactly. Like he had, yeah. he stacked the guy. He's baiting you. So like it's it's no, there's no easy transition for a rookie. There's really not. No. Nope. Um. Okay. So bottom of the screen here. Okay. So this is where you see some of that some of that weave coming in where he's you know he's he's not shuffling right away. Yeah. The only thing only thing that I'll say that I don't like is is I think he's a little too slow getting out of here. Out of this break right the, here. Yeah, I mean, just – I mean, only, re- only reason – and I'm always thinking, like – I'm always thinking of the counter. So, that's probably why you – I mean, even everybody else is probably going to look at this and like, oh, no, that was great coverage. Yes, it is great coverage. I'm not saying that. But you always have to think about the counter when you're playing corner. So, if you – if you know, you have to come back like this before – I mean, obviously, you know, can I get out and up? Um, can I get – you know, a guy that's like a DeAndre Hopkins that's going to sell me on the out and it'd be a, it'd be a out, you know, an outpost or mm-hmm. out dig. I mean, it, cause those are the routes you're going to get in the league. You're not just going to get, you know, regular just comebacks all the time in the league. You're going to get counters, you know, off of what wide receivers run. So I, I'm, I use, I'm thinking about that. So don't just screw what I'm, I'm talking about right now. No, no he or even, or even it was like a, like one of those routes where it's like a, like an out, like where he runs it out and he sits down, like where he's able to sit it down right here. Right. Yeah. Right. He's drifting and work back in. Up. Right. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that's the thing. So he just want to be careful with, you know, sitting like that. You know, I like his instincts and being able to, you know, and wanting to break on the ball and, and being able to read that. Yeah. You know, I just want, you know, I think he should just be just a little bit careful, you know, when, when, you, when he's doing it at the next level. But, you know, outside of that, I like his burst. Just like I would like to see the angle be a little bit more 45. They rounded it off. Yeah. Like this whole motion. Yeah, but part of that is he's a tall guy, and 
you know, he's got his arms filling everywhere and, you know, you can't, you can't get any momentum to, you know, break, to have a clean break, you know, when, when your body's not right. Now, this is where we talk about, like when I talk about, like, I don't, I don't believe it's a game of inches. I think it's a game of, of millimeters and centimeters that, that those 32 inch arms right there help. Like he just oh, yeah. extends to that ball. He just gets it. Yeah. And that's what so, you want. Oh, yeah. Literally like big, I, I think long arms, I mean, honestly, a lot of just like offensive line, uh, defensive line, outside linebackers, corners, like long arms matter. How, how long are your arms, Marcus? Can I, I, no you, I, I you mean, pass it? Long. Uh, I don't know. I can't say. <laughs> I know it's hard to see. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, long, I'm, have to, I'm have to come there to Texas and uh, measure, <laughs> measure your arms and see if you're be up. Yeah. <laughs> and if Jamal Adams now. goes to the Cowboys, I'm going to have to to spray paint the Cowboys stadium or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then get arrested and lose my <laughs> lose my career. But <laughs> so, bottom of the screen. Um, Looks like they have cover four. And that's the, the top might be cover four too, but maybe that's like a palms call where the two breaks outside. So he breaks out. out yeah. Two. So like, yeah, or we call it mix. So yeah. First, okay, yeah I call it palms out. or, or read. Yeah. I call it, I call that palms or read or two read. Yeah. So we just call it mix. So it's the same okay. thing though. Yes. Okay. It's literally the same thing. So the corners reading two, the two breaks out, corner jumps two, safety takes one, you know, takes mm -hmm. one immediately. Yeah, so for people who are confused, uh, I'm sure like we're talking about palms and two mix. People are like, "What the hell are you talking about?" They're watching this, but like, okay, you get you get vertical, vertical. They match. If you right. if 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 um if he cuts outside, he he jumps it. Right. If this if, if the way I'm taught palms, if now if number two breaks inside on a drag, they bracket one they double one. Or yeah. there's two like two. I know there's two, certain two reads calls where palms is strictly that. There's two read calls now too, where now this guy can play like a robber like a robber guys yeah, but, or right. and then there's and the reason for <laughs> palms is and the and the reason for palms is 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 a lot of for this backer because if you're playing like a true four this this uh this backer has to have outside leverage to play that flat but right. playing that palms where he could jump it now allows him to be in the box for the run game too so like there's exactly. certain reasons for everything that's how i was the reasons i was taught it but uh yeah no that's right and that's we played it at Trinity. It's the same thing. Two, okay. we play, we call mix. Two goes out, corner jumps in, safety takes one. And who's, your, who's your defensive coordinator? I don't, you know, I'm just, should I build a resume or what's the. Uh... Oh, Paul, yeah. Oh, Paul, yeah. Coach, Coach, Coach Mahala, yeah. Oh, job, job. Yeah, you can build it, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's so, a yeah, part. I mean, um, yeah, no, that's how we play. That's what they're playing. No, they're it's, it's. Playing. There's, there's reasons for everything. The, the reason for that was because, like I said, a lot of teams, okay, now they're going to – if they know you're playing four, um, now you're taking that linebacker out of the box. But that really allows right. the linebacker to, to continue to play. Um, but, okay, so he's at the bottom. Sorry for going on a palms or two mix or <laughs> whatever you're calling it, tangent. But um, looks like that's to the, to the bottom, too. They're playing four. Okay, yeah, so they're playing four, I, I, I think, at the bottom, too. So, um, I – like this play because of him breaking on the ball, but at the same time, he, I, I would like to see him maintain outside leverage here from, from the jump. Like I don't like him getting inside and, and he kind of loses that guy as he attacks the blind spot. Like right here, he has no idea what's going on. Yeah, I, the guy I agree. Gets inside. Now, if this ball is, is led better and he doesn't have to gear down for that ball, yeah, he makes a great play, undercutting it, tipping the ball. But that could have been well, a big catch. Yeah, if the wide receiver here is running – if he just if he if he's able to stay on his path with a with a better ball, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think that's possibly a catch. Um, just because the safety, the backside safety, which he can't help on that, you know, when you're playing, you know, Palms or Kathy or whatever you want to call it, he can possibly, you know, be back to help on that. But because he's late, if this is a better ball, you know, that's probably a catch. So I I actually don't mind his alignment initially. Um right here. I, I just like him to see, you know, he needs to squeeze. He's good being on top, but he needs to squeeze the wide receiver a little bit more. I mean, and this, obviously, if you're running like this and you're, you know, you're playing four, you know, the wide receiver is going to be behind you a little bit. I just like to see him keep his eyes on the wide out more and be able to squeeze him more, you know, on the post route than having to play catch up you know, and bank on an underthrown ball or a bad ball or something like that. Yeah, because, like, I, I just feel like, like I'm, I'm fine with his level, leverage initially, but I just, like I said, outside leverage because he would see this, like, so like right here, this, this when he breaks inside, 
there's that whole right. like couple steps right there that he has to react late to because he doesn't see the guy. Um, right. but yeah, isn't that you, you said Kathy? That's right. That's what Greg Williams calls it, right? Like like uh, Kathy coverage. Everybody has yeah, different so, names. Yeah, that's what. Like, yeah, so Palm. Yeah, Palms and Kathy. I mean, yeah, those two usually go together. That's it's it. um, it's 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 there's so many freaking different names for different things. It's, I know, right? <laughs> and they're all the same like you're trying to learn something. Like, oh, I thought that's called Palms. Well, no, Palms is the same thing as Kathy, but you're trying to learn. It's like holy shit! Like just call yeah. one thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, bottom of the screen, he is. I, I, let's see what the, I don't know what the coverage is. Let's see. Looks like a, that's, this is another, this is odd. Um, he's an off man, I guess. I think they're playing man at the bottom. Um, and like a, like a combo? Cause, cause, yeah, because the safety bites on the run, on a run fake, and he doesn't even attempt to get back. Like he's down there immediately. So it's got to be yeah, some kind of combo, and I don't know what they're playing up at the top. You know, that's why I say they're playing man. Because if you look at the flare, the safety's following the flare, corner's playing one at the top, and then, um, you know, Hall is covering his guy down here at the bottom. Yeah. So, so. this is a this is a decent play from him. Um, he, he angles off a little bit. But honestly, uh, if we're being completely fair, the, re- the receiver kind of is already leading into his break before he makes his break. So that's exactly. a little bit easier for him. But yeah. he does break to the up to the, to the upfield shoulder. And then he 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 chops through the hands and he and he uh, breaks up that ball. So I really like his ability to like play play that ball though for sure. Yeah, I do. And and I mean, obviously, like like we we don't know what coverages they're playing, you know. And, and it is I can see why he's playing head up the outside here because you got a safety here taking away the slant, you know. Initially, um, you know, the safety's got to do a better job of reading, running, pass, you know, knowing that he, especially since they got an extra hat in the box already, but. He does do a good job of breaking. Just like to see the break just a little bit more of the up his shoulder and I get caught behind here, you know, if you can tell at the end. Mm-hmm. So if you're breaking more up his shoulder so you can secure the tackle, you know, and get the ball out, you know, I would just like to see that. So driving to the man, maybe another step or so, you know, getting to the up his shoulder to make sure if he does catch it, okay, I can secure the tackle or, you know, I still give myself an opportunity. So maybe it's a little bit too aggressive of an angle to the ball? Yeah, because he's okay. look he's having a dive at it. See how he's behind? He yeah, oh behind, yeah. Yeah, he ends up behind the wide receiver. So if you're driving to the wide receiver's up their shoulder, um, you know, you give yourself a chance to secure the tackle, you know, and get the ball out. And I know it is nitpicky, but you gotta be able to do both. I, there, there are gonna be a lot of balls caught in the league where you got great yeah. coverage and guys are still gonna catch it. Listen, you like you're gotta, as people say, you're go, you're gonna get got, but yeah. you gotta limit that play from a five ten yard gain from a 70 yard catch and run touchdown like right. that matters that, exactly that those little differences that were that you're talking about and that sometimes i bring up is the reasons guys stick or guys are on practice squads and, and fizzle out of the league in two three years you know yep um top of the screen another another looks like cover four yeah the screen yeah yeah so Again, like his, his, why is he playing inside again here? I don't know why. But well, I mean, well, it depends. Some people, some people play four, and four is played different in a lot of. Some people coach play four inside. Um, some people coach playing four outside, and then sometimes it's week to week. Like there's weeks mm-hmm. where we would tell our guys if we know we didn't get a lot of outbreaking routes by number two, just go ahead and play it inside. You know what I'm saying? So the corner ends up solely on number one. He doesn't have to worry about number two, you know, if that's the case. So, I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, what, you know, what Virginia is playing here, but, you know, obviously, yeah, you know, they, it could be a week to week game plan thing, you know, in, in this, in this regard. So. So um, he gets inside of him speed turn. He's not too aggressive getting back to him. He plays the upfield shoulder. Uh, mm-hmm. gets his and just plays the ball like it's there's some plays you don't really you can't really explain everything he's doing but he just play he plays through the hands he attacks the ball ends up being a yeah. PD a, a, a P, I don't know what I just said a PD um good play he he plays the ball like a, like a former receiver for sure yeah no he does a good job playing the ball and actually the speed turn isn't bad either you just gotta make no. sure yeah you just gotta make sure you continue to close continue to close um thing is is what I always go back to if you're in your pedal, you play this a lot easier, you know, than shuffling, you know, and it's just like the weaknesses that you stated, you know, he has a tendency to turn it open up and, and ready to run, you know, too early 
you know, I think this is one of those cases where, you know, if the wide receiver brings this over a little bit more, let's just say if he brings it to, you know, where the inside part of the V is, I don't know if he's going to get there. Yeah, he, if he cuts it flat. Yeah, if he makes if he cuts it a little bit flatter, I don't know if he's getting there. You know, to be honest with you. And or, or even if it was like a dig, if it, like, even if it's like a dig, like let's say, oh, if it's dig, oh, if it's if it's a dig, it's over. Yeah, it, it, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. So not even dig just like, like flat, just like, like real. It's called real flat. It's called a dig. Yeah. You know. Yeah, if he runs a dig, it's over. Yeah, yeah. He, he do still running. So mm-hmm. yeah, he's he just got to be. Yeah, he just got to be careful. He just got to be careful with opening up. And I think the shuffle is, you know, like I like I talked about earlier, the shuffle is part of that. You know, it speeds up your clock faster than what it needs to be, you know, when you start shuffling like that. Bottom of the screen. Um, Ooh, bad hands, bad feet. And and he's in no man's land. Like like that 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 two to three yards off. I don't. I really don't like that. Yeah, that that takes a lot of work. I mean, it does take a lot of work. I I did it, and I actually learned how to play it very well. But it took me, like, it literally took me a minute to, you know, to, you know, to work on it. It really did. I mean, most of the time, if I wasn't going over starter reps, like I would go do all scout team reps because I would have to work on on doing that. And Some really, call it catch coverage, but I still call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's catch. Um, you know, you know, or whatever the name is, you know, is for it, but mm-hmm. you really have to work on it because you really have to work on patience with your feet, you know, and, and you know, how you're playing and, and engaging the wide receiver. Like it takes a lot of work to do it. And this is where you're talking about patience with the feet and the hips, because as soon as the angles off right there, he's locked out. Now you're locked out and he defeats that inside arm with like that, that little like swipe. Now you're pretty, you're pretty yeah. much screwed. Now, again, my problem with this is once he's been inside, I don't like that his eyes are inside. Yeah, he's like out, so, out. Their, their eyes, their, his eyes are inside as he's turning. Yeah, he's so there, yeah. I would like to see him get his eyes on you know the, the receiver because does he make this catch? He does make this catch. It's it's it was one of the, it was like that first or one of those first plays we watched, Marcus, where he got beat deep and he and he and he got stacked because he he was looking at the back of the the quarterback. Again, right. if he's beat here, wouldn't maybe you agree? Maybe you don't. I would like to see him get more vertical here and and play that upfield shoulder, that near shoulder, instead of letting himself get stacked because he's playing underneath with no over top help. Right. Well, yeah. Well, that's what you want to do. If you if you get yourself caught in a situation like this, you have to do everything you can to get back to the upfield shoulder of the wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, because as you're running, because you got to think of it like this: as you're running, trying to get back to the upfield shoulder, while the wide receiver is looking back, you're actually gaining ground. So getting back to the upfield shoulder, if anything, it gives you a chance to maybe make that play on the ball, but at least you get, you know, you can get back just in case he does catch it and you can secure the tackle. But here, this will be, this will be called PI all day in the NFL anyway, because I mean, look where he's grabbing. I mean, he's Mm -hmm. grabbing literally after he gets beat and he's still grabbing and he's still grabbing. That's going to get called every time. So he's going to have to clean that up. But it starts at the line. Uh, The half feet, you know, again, Footwork's not good. Jams with the wrong hand. He jams with the near hand and not the off hand. So it's harder for him to get his hips around. And now he's late. So you know that's where he's going to have to do, you know, a lot of his work. You know, once he he gets in the camp, may get started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even after all that, like like right here, if he starts to work vertically and to that to this shoulder instead of underneath, then yeah, he's a good position, a much better position to play that ball. Mm-hmm. So all right, we're uh, we got about ten plays left here. Run through them. Um, Hall beat need oh needs to get inside more before open. All right, let's see what it says. Hall beat. <laughs> no, but like I said, even even though we're we're nitpicking, I I well, not nitpicking. We're 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 I think we're fairly criticizing a guy who's a he's gonna be a rookie. Like you're not gonna come in, you know, completely uh, set up with with everything right. you need. But talk, since you know since we, you said that. For a fifth round pick, like you, you I, I think you got to like his film, right? Yeah, his film's not bad. No, no doubt. That's what I'm saying. For where he was drafted, like he's not far off. Like, and that's why I said some of the things that that he does, like they're correctable. You know, they're things oh, that can, yeah. you know, that's what I'm saying. Like his, you know, his game isn't bad. You know, it's just some of the technical things he needs to work on and, and, and improve on, you know, that'll help him be a much better player. You know, his game actually, I mean, he's not there for off. I mean, he's really, he's really not. 
what are you seeing on, on this play from him um, on the bottom bottom right here? Because he get he gets. So that's I think this is what I was saying. I would like to see him like he's almost working at a pretty aggressive angle right there. Right. And it, it kind of freezes like freezes his feet. Where I like to see him take more of like a like a back pedal weave softer angle and get over top more because he's playing too he's like playing out like he's playing far outside and it forces him to open up a little bit when he threatens inside right side speed turn and he's not able to make the play right i mean in this case if you go back to the to the beginning all right go back to his alignment okay he's already well let me see he's at five six okay he's actually not bad he's at seven yards seven eight yards all right so he's actually not bad on his depth what i would like to see him do as opposed to moving up and chasing the wide out because he already has this inside leverage already Mm -hmm. and you're thinking you know the wide receiver may be running a quick crosser just you know, either weave laterally or shuffle laterally and not jump down on it, you know, like he's doing, you know, kind of like he did. So now, but the thing is, is this, when you start your lateral movement, you got to start getting some depth because you don't know if this wide receiver is going to take it up, you know, what he's going to do. So the wide receiver, you know, mm -hmm. gives him a little move, gives him like one or two hard steps. First thing he wants to do is open up. And I'm saying, I thought he was a little bit too aggressive that. right here with his, right. his feet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And he doesn't have an, enough depth. He doesn't have enough room. You, know, you never want to let a wide eye get up on your toes. You know, that's in any, you know, versus any route. And so here is a perfect example why. Because he sells him on, on the quick crosser. He opens up, you know, on the second move. And now he's locked out. He can't get back. And the wide receiver's, you know, running the out route. You know, that's, yeah. you know, that's, you know, something, again, that goes back to the, you know, it's kind of it, being aggressive and, and the shuffling, they kind of go hand in hand. You know, because most people shuffle because they want to be aggressive. And you can't always do that, you know, especially in all covers. Yeah, like shuffle shuffle and press, but shuffle, shuffling and off, uh, you better – if it's cover two, maybe, like if you can reroute right. to, 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 you know, to the deep half, but shuffling with no help really anywhere else, that's, that's a risky – you're playing a risky game. Yeah. Um, all right, it's really, really similar to the play. We don't have to break down much of this. Uh, we yeah. talk about this already. Um, he's another. He's a cloud corner to the top right here. Um, doesn't he? Doesn't maintain outside leverage. He gets sucked inside a little bit right here, and he he screws his safety. Um, and now they throw that into that into that I th turkey turkey hole honey. No, yeah, I think it's a yeah. honey hole. I think it's a honey hole. Honey hole. hole. Yeah, honey. Yeah, honey hole. hole. I've, I like heard, I've heard. Hole. I've heard turkey hole. Honey hole. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if you're just trying to get my back right there. I think it's called a honey hole. I called it a yeah. hole. I don't know why. I just call it hole shot. I don't even like give it a name. I just okay. call it hole shot. <laughs> hole shot. So yeah. outside, he needs outside leverage. Needs the reroute. Uh, yeah. Funnel to the safety. He doesn't. Now, now he's in that. That he gets hit in that hole shot. That turkey hole, honey <laughs> hole, bee hole, whatever tree hole, whatever you want to call it. It's a hole. <laughs> so uh, yeah. that's what happens right there, right, Marcus? There's really nothing else yeah. to break yeah. down. Yeah, it's just like the other ones. You gotta yep. work on that. Yeah, all right. So moving on. Squeeze. All right. Um top of the screen. Pretty we're we're seeing a lot of the same stuff now. Um yeah. where he 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 likes playing with that inside leverage. Um is is pretty fa uh, pretty patient with his feet. I think he opens up me um maybe because I, I, I yeah i think he's all right right here maybe a split second soon but i'm not gonna i don't i don't i don't think that's bad at all yeah no i think he's all right and the only reason and the reason why i say that is because again because he's shuffling like he has to open up he doesn't have a choice and the distance that he he chooses to open up at is actually good because you got to give yourself you know time to get started you know once you're you, you kind of stuck in it you know stuck in that shuffle that that and he opens up and again he's not just going vertical he 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 works the squeeze works the yep. squeeze gets the right arm on the shoulder uh, in front of the shoulder uh transitions that into playing you know tight with the hips plays through the ball and mm -hmm. he literally look the guy's out of bounds like he's out of bounds now yeah no that's a good job i mean and the, sa the safety jumps it but really good job by hall taking him out of the play right there yeah no it really is no that's a good job squeezing mm -hmm. you know you know giving the, the safety a chance to make a play on the ball all right, another play of uh, patient and squeeze. He's to the top. Yeah, that's, see, that's not bad. That's another. That's, that's a good one. 
That's see, not I bad like, at all. I, I like him more impressed than I do in off. Now, if he is an off, I like to see. I, I like to see him more. Like I don't like him an off man. If it is off, I would like like three or four, but not off man. If he's gonna be playing man, I would rather see him press. Yeah. Um, but soft shoe. He's he's chest over over knees. He's pretty patient with his hip, with his hips and his feet. He's not overreacting. Gets the left hand on. Transitions yeah. to the to the right. Squeeze yeah. it. Hand on, it, not behind the shoulder on the side of the shoulder, in front of the, in shoulder, front of the shoulder. Really impeding the guy. Yep. Squeezes him. Plays back to the ball, and the ball's out of bounds. That's a really good play right there. Yeah, that's a really good play. Good footwork, good lateral movement. And, some, and hey, sometimes, you know, and that's why I, I usually do encourage a lot of DBs, especially corners, like do a lot of boxing work because this is why. You got to you be able to transition from one hand to the other. Even if you get the wrong hand out first, you know, it's fine, which is what he did. Wrong hand, but he, he quickly, he's able to adjust and get the, you know, get the off hand back you know, and get it in front, like you said, which is, oh. which is an excellent job. So, no, good job there. Good job being able to control the wide receiver. Now you own the route. Now you're in control. Oh, it's you know, done. He choked it off. He's done. Yeah. Now, if I was a re- – the, 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 the Roger Sears coach, you'd really want to see him defeat this hand before he runs him up the field for five yards. It, but that's a yeah, story that's for a story. Yeah. Who cares? We're not, we don't like wide receivers. Um, let's see. Play 29. I think we got about six left here, Marcus. Uh, maybe I'm lying to you. I have another 30. <laughs> I'm kidding. <Mm-mm>. So, <laughs> I'm getting off. All right. So top of the screen, um, rips ball out. Clunk. So I, I marked down that sometimes his, his feet like look a little clunky. His feet are look a little clunky right there to me. Yeah. That's that doesn't look, su- that doesn't look super smooth. Like he, he starts a heel click. Yeah. They try to like. They, what, well, that's what you do when you shuffle, instead of pedal. See what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a uh, little pedal. It's it's a, it's easier. Everything looks more fluid. And again, look because he's shuffling. See him have to like Superman, you know, out of his break. Mm-hmm. Right there. I mean, if he's in this pedal and he's smoother, I mean, he's yeah. he's probably a full step and a half closer. Yeah, you get you get your you get your feet under your frame. It's it's a really clean, quick break, but it's that T step or you know when your feet are under you or you said a, you said another step before I forget what you said. Oh, like quarter step. So you okay. can do like full T step where you turn your foot all the way to the side, or you yeah. can do quarter when you only turn you know your foot out maybe like a quarter. Yeah. Break that way. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like a halfway between the T and the normal like pedal that like to the side right. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, he does break on the ball. Now this play actually ends up like good because he a- ends up actually ripping the ball out right here yeah. <laughs> and runs for a touchdown. But this is where I'm process over results. I like that play, that part of it. But in the NFL, the ball is out now. Oh yeah. The ball's gone. And it's so, in his yeah. hands. Like this, <laughs> yeah. this quarterback is waiting way too long for that. Yeah, ball he's, to come out. Yeah, he, yeah. He's late. He's real late. So great oh. job with this part. You can see him like literally the ball pops out right there, rips it out, and runs yep. back for a touchdown. But so there's some things to improve on. Um, play 30, uh, break back the ball, PD. Okay. Top of the screen. I'll play it again. Um, you're, you're, you're probably going you're, you're gonna to say the, sh- the, the opening up with the shuffle a little bit too early, right? Yeah, a little bit too early, but I mean, because I mean, because of the you know his athletic ability, I mean, he can get away with this here. I mean, so I can't really fault him with that. I mean, I mean to be honest with you, you know, I just don't like the say he's crossing over while he's shuffling. Like I, I that I don't like. You know, that's you know that makes it hard for you to to even break. Yeah, you know, you're not you're breaking anywhere right here or yeah. right here. Yep. Right. See what I'm saying? It's just a little hard, but I mean. You know, because he's probably a little more athletic than that wide receiver is, you know, and he's and doing a good job of reading the routes, um, you know, and that obviously comes from film study. You know, he's able to, you know, get a good break and make the play, you know, so he can settle that. Yeah, another another PD. That's pretty nice right there. Yeah. Uh, play 31. Recognition tackle for loss. All right. And there's I, – I know there was one play that I'm going to criticize his tackling, which I don't I don't want to put a ton of tackling into this, but uh, this I guess is a, this is a good one. This looked to me when I was watching this like film study. Um, I don't know what the communication is right here between him and the safety. Um, but as soon as they see him switching, they, they, I, I guess they start to talk a little bit. And you can see him like start to like get on his toes a little bit and start to creep up right here. Yeah. So he's expecting it. And oh, he, yeah. he sees that smoke again. 
breaks inside number one, uh, lowers, like reduces that shoulder right there, and is able to make the tackle for the loss. So I, I said it with the strengths and weaknesses. He's definitely a really willing, smart guy in the, in the run game to me in terms of like his uh, recognition and, and willingness to make a play on the ball or on the, on the runner. Yeah, no, I mean, he, I mean, he wants to get in the mix, which is, you know, what you want from your corners. I mean, it's, it's you know, playing corner is more than just covering. You know, you got to be able to tackle, mm-hmm. especially if you're, you know, running, you know, similar schemes to what, you know, where Virginia is running, where they're playing two, you're playing quarters, you're playing six. Like, you got to be, you know, you're, you know, a hat that's counted in the run game. So, especially on these smoke routes. So, no, the fact that he wants to get into the mix, and get in and tackle is, is, you know, that's an advantage. All right. This is a play uh, that he's – this is where – like, a, so he's on the bottom. He gets beat by this double move. He plays the inside leverage a little bit more than I like because in situations like this, like, it wasn't the – let's see what happens here. So the way to counter double moves, again, how I was taught, you want to come down at an angle where you're playing that upfield shoulder – because mm-hmm. now if he is to break back up field, he has to work through that upfield through towards the angle that he's going to take. So now you're coming to that, you're coming into contact and now you're, now it's game on again. But when you're right. too far inside, you're not playing that upfield shoulder. You're screwed. Like he, he, he screwed himself because of his leverage here. Yeah. Well, well I mean, they're playing, I'm, I'm trying to see what they're playing because their safety sitting. Uh, I think they're playing. It could be cover. It, it looks like it could be cover four again. Yeah, it looks like they're playing quarters, all right. But yeah, so if so anything, only, play outside definitely. Yeah, if anything, if you especially yeah, you don't have a number two threat, and he, I mean, he's an inline yeah inline tight end, and he blocks. So yeah, I mean, it makes it easy on you. Um, so yeah, he should be playing it a little bit more head up, you know, probably outside. But the thing is, you know, unless they don't coach it that way, so we can't say that. But the yeah. thing is, is because he's shuffling, and the first thing you know, he's reacting on the first move. So when you shuffle and you're reacting you really don't give yourself a chance to get back and, and get into the position which you were talking about earlier. So when you're doing – when you're playing double moves, all right, you want to initially break to the upfield or the outside, you know, the outside shoulder of the wide receiver just in case you get a double move. So like you said, um, you know, the wide receiver now has to work through you and it really won't be called pass interference because you have the ability as a defensive back, you can establish your ground. Yeah, it's it's so, incidental contact. Exactly. Yeah. Deal. So, so you know, it gives you a leg up on that. And then, because he's breaking into you when you're trying to turn and get in the phase, you can actually use that momentum to turn you around oh, yeah. so you can run. Yeah. Now you're slowing so down his momentum and he's propelling you in the way you want to go to play it. Exactly. Yeah. But here, because he, I mean, and this is just how he plays. He shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. First move, boom, he's gone, and he's looking back at the quarterback when he takes off. I mean, so he has no chance here. Yeah, now the ball is overthrown. Uh, this Florida – this Florida – I think it's Florida State. The Florida State? Yeah. yeah, it looks like it. Um, whoever that coach is is probably not very happy with him. Like, that late throw right there, that missed throw, uh, you just got to yeah. put it on him, you know, like. But let's see. Uh, jam opens early, looks early. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bottom of the screen. <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't mind a quick jam. Quick jam ain't bad. All right. Yeah, no, thing I'm – yep, go ahead. With, yeah, thing with the quick jam is when you quick jam, you got to get back square quick. Back to balance. You got to get back to balance immediately. So once you – whether you miss it or you make, you know, make good contact, you got to get back to balance quick. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here so, – Yeah, you really want to see that hand and then him shoot back to balance and then like or, – or at least like shuffle outside with more square hips because he opens right. up his hips and now he's playing too far over the top. Beat inside, yep. again. Yep. It looks like his eyes are back early. Plays too too aggressive of an angle instead of, instead of playing that upfield shoulder, that near shoulder, mm-hmm. gets underneath, allows the guy to stack him, and now he's beat. Which you know could have been a, a completion if the ball is put in the right area or whatever. But uh, oh, I, yeah. it's actually called a penalty. They throw the flag. Yeah, they throw the flag. Yeah. I was about to say that should have been a pi. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, if anything, yeah. Yeah, he's pulling him. So. Um, again, there's some things to, to, to improve on. Uh, we have four plays left. All right, let's see. Um, loses ball. It, to, the, the, the review is not ending well, but we'll get, we'll give Mark or we'll get Marcus's overall thoughts at, at the end of this. All right. So he's at the top. I don't, I don't hate the, the, the coverage right here. Like stays over the top, stays in a shuffle, breaks back to the, to the receiver. Like maybe he's, 
Honestly, yeah, the only, the, my criticism of the shuffle here is I, I would see a little bit more arm pump. Um, yeah. I mean, his pedal's not bad. It's actually not bad. I mean, he's, I mean, his, his pedal actually is pretty good. It's not bad. I mean, in good step. See the difference when between the shuffle and when he's pedaling. You can stick, boom, stick the foot in the ground. I mean, that's a little I'm kind too. of just a little far. Yeah, but yeah, a little bit out of his it, frame. Yeah, it's a little bit out of his frame, but it gives you a cleaner break, you know, coming forward. Now, the only thing that I would say here is, is, is because he already has outside leverage, you just want to be careful when you're driving back inside as well. You know, so, and obviously, you know, you, you don't always bank on quarterback scramble and extended plays, but this is why you want to get back to the guy, back to the receiver, knowing that the ball's not thrown, but you want to still be on the, the upfield shoulder. Was just look at the reason before the double move. And this is a, this be a yeah. really long de- developing double move, but still. Right. But still, yeah, you want to, you know, you want to be, unless the ball is thrown, you want to, you got to make sure that you're sure you can take this angle, you know. Again, it looks like his eyes are back to the quarterback here, and you know a little bit early. Um, so he loses the break a little bit, but he's able to to turn, uh, get on him, and then he does lose the ball at the top right here. Um, he kind of it looks like he's almost like lost, whereas like he doesn't know if he wants to play through the ball or or through the receiver, whatever it may be. But he does end up losing. The receiver makes a great catch, but uh, maybe here just just play straight through the receiver instead of kind of being a little bit lost in space right there. Yeah, I mean here. The, your best bet is playing it through the receiver, but he's so busy, he's so busy trying to grab because he's behind. You know that you know he's not. I don't think he's even thinking about the ball right now. But he, he's kind of panicking right here. You know, you can just tell that by the way that he's grabbing at the receiver. But your best your best bet is to play through the receiver, play through the receiver's hands. You know, in that in that instance. Which is why when we talk about Mims showing those late hands is really important because when yep. you're you know they're gonna play through those hands and their feet, uh, bottom right here. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a that's a push off by the receiver, hundred percent. Yeah, but pretty good rep. Um, my 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 mini criticism is again, like, and I think you might say the same thing is, I would like to see him one not get in his heels so quickly here and not open up as like you want to see more shuffles, you want to see less opening up quickly, right? But. Again, is a, he's able to get his hand on. He's able to, to squeeze the guy to the sideline. Um, and he's looking back for the ball. Now, I think just based on like how he reacts right here, it's definitely a push-off. Yeah, no, I think that's a push-off. The receiver, I mean, the, receiver doesn't make the, the receiver doesn't make the catch. But what are you seeing with this rep? Yeah, the only thing I, I, I agree, I mean, you just want to stay square, you know, about a half a second longer. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that I would say. But he does do a good job of widening him out and, and pushing him, you know, and pushing him to, you know, to the sideline. And what I do like about this is he actually turned into the wide receiver as opposed to turning, you know, away from the wide receiver. Yep. Yeah, he plays through. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. So second to last one. Uh, okay. So this is where I talk about, like, sometimes he comes in a little bit uncontrolled um, to the top right here where he kind of looks like lay the wood. Um, where I like to see him be a little bit more, a little bit more patient, just make the tackle. Like, yeah, it's, it's great to make a big hit. But especially, especially like here, you're the, you're the, you're the farthest, most, most outside guy. And he's already right. losing balance. Like, come in more control here and just make the tackle. Like, you make the tackle. And listen, now, now it's a two-yard loss, but he comes in really with a f- head full of steam, isn't controlled, misses the tackle. And now instead of being a negative two-yard play for the offense, you know, it ends up being, a let's say, a nine-yard gain. Nine-yard gain, yeah. I mean, no, you're exactly right. Especially, you know, when you're the corner and you're the, you end up being the force, you got to come in yeah. under control. Under control – good balance, eyes on, on the, you know, the near hip coming to you, you know, taking the outside hip away mm-hmm. and making it tackle. I mean, especially here because the only place he can go is to the sideline. So if you come down here and, and under control, you know, you turn it back in to, you know, the rest of your teammates or you make the tackle. Yeah, come to balance, get, get some shuffles in, you know, but come in full speed like this and just throw it, get in an arm tackle. Right. Yeah, yeah, instead of, yeah you can't always blow guys up. You just got to come in and make tackles. <laughs> Yep. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last play. This is a play I like to see. Um, effort. And so he really has nothing to do with this play initially. I think it's just a run to the to the left side of this pistol. Um, he's to the top right here. And this is that's really all it was was effort. Um, this is things I, I, I really look for on film, um, in terms of like, are you gonna hustle? Yep. And he I don't know if you've heard all the stories, Marcus, but he's a guy who like Literally, and this is – and listen, I know there's some players, uh, whoever it may be, like who do a lot of charity stuff for tax write-offs and things like that. So sometimes I like to see through it. 
Mm-hmm. But he's a guy who like legitimately like like volunteer time to teach kids books and read and do all this stuff. Like he's a, he's everybody says he's a really good dude at Virginia. He's in the he's in the uh, weight room and in the uh, watching film like all day long. And they say he's like he's like mother he looks mother Teresa look like a you know a C U N N T. So oh, wow, <laughs> that's a <laughs> perk. Um, so and a really high effort guy. So I, I like to see this and. As a teammate, I'm sure if you were his Virginia teammate and you see this, like he automatically goes up another notch in your book, right? Oh, no doubt. I mean, because here's the thing. I mean, I mean, obviously, especially on defense, you always coach effort. You know, that's the main thing that you coach. All right. And to see a guy like that, that's, you know, you know, quote unquote, one of your stars, one of your starters, yeah. you know, hustle the way that he does, um, you know, give maximum effort on every play. You know, that's what you want. You know, that's the kind of teammate that you want. And, you know, that obviously for other guys that may be taking a playoff here or a playoff there, you can't, you know, because it's kind of like, okay, well, he doesn't do it, so I definitely can't do it. You know, so it has a trickle-down effect. Yeah. So, you know, this is, you know, and everybody, like, makes fun of the high effort thing or whatever it is. Like, no, you give effort on every play, whether you're involved in it, you know, directly or or not. You know, you, you know that's part of, yeah. you know, your job and what you're supposed to do. So, yeah, he totally gets a notch. Yeah, I, I, I like to see that, like whether it be from a backside defensive end, from a wide receiver blocking, from a corner chasing down a play. Um, because Jets have been burned in the past. Like, and Jets fans should understand this better than anybody. There were plays where Muhammad Wilkerson was loafing. Like, I should play like, plays of him. This is where I barely knew legitimately anything. I still know it. I still know nothing, to be honest. Like, there's just so much to learn. But there's plays where you'd see him on film loafing. Uh, you know, and I know you know him somehow through a friend or whatever, Tremaine Johnson. Yeah. The guys who don't give this play is the guys you pay and then they, they, they fizzle out because they, they care about the money and that's it. Hall, like, it seems like he loves the game. And that's why when I see plays like this, like, I, I note it down. People, like, that's why I'll put up reviews and nobody said to me recently because I think I've made my stance known on I care about wide receiver blocking. But people are like, oh, who cares about that? I care. I think guys in the yeah. NFL care. Coaches care. So why should I not note it down and care, you know? Right. Um, but overall, that's the last play. Um, for you, like, what do you think his, like, his projection, like, what do you think of, of him as a prospect? Where do you think he fits in, like, Greg Williams' defense? Like, what do you think he'll excel at? Um, do you think he could be – I think, personally, he could be a starter in the future. Do you, do you agree with that? Um, like, what are your overall wrapped-up thoughts on, uh, on Bryce Hall? Whew, I mean, right now, I think um, what I do like about him, I, I will say is this. I, you can tell he watches film. You can definitely tell that he watches film. Um, you know, his reading recognition skills are, are really good, um, you know, in that regard and knowing what concepts he's going to get, um, understanding routes. So I like that part of it. I do like his, his aggressiveness as a corner, you know, whether it be from a tackling standpoint or being physical with wide receivers. Now, the thing is, I think sometimes it gets him in trouble when he's being too aggressive. Um, and the only other thing uh, that I would say is – Obviously, besides like eyes in the backfield, you know, looking too early, things like that, um, the angles is, goes into being a little too aggressive. Mm-hmm. Footwork, um, you know, being a more pedal sound guy than a shuffle guy, you know, than, than anything else. But like I said, those things, you know, those are things you can correct. You know, you can fix those things, you know, but, you yeah. know, the film study, understanding the game, you know, awareness. Uh, I mean, you can coach film study, you can teach somebody how to watch film, but really like awareness and like instincts that's really hard to coach some some either you just you have it or you don't you know and and i think he has it yeah. you know in that regard so that's what i'm saying he's not that far off and, and i do think he can become a starter in this league um right now i just don't know how confident i would be as a coach you know putting him in uh you know like single man or man to man situations right now uh you know and i actually think he could probably play you know, a little safety, whether it be in nickel or in dime concepts, um, you know, covering whether it be, you know, doubling two, you know, doubling one or doubling two on the slide or covering, uh, you know, two on the slide. Or um, since he's coming off of this injury, you know, put him on a tight end. You know, yeah. mi- you know, mix it up, you know, mix it up. I, you know, I think, you know, because of his size, because of his aggressiveness, you know, he could, if it's not a pass, if he's covering the tight end and the tight end blocks, you know, he could be an extra hat in the run game and, you know, and make, you know, make tackles. So I think he can fit in a lot of different places, you know, but I think, you know, as a corner, I just, you know, I think he's not far off, 
you know, there's just some technical things he has to work on. Yeah. You know, and eventually maybe after, you know, maybe year two, you know, towards the middle of year two or something like that, you know, he could end up, you know, getting a lot more time. Yeah, I, I think if he's healthy, they got to steal in the fifth round. Um, he's probably one of my favorite picks, him and him and Clark. I definitely like a lot. Uh, Mims, too. We, we both like Mims a lot. Um, I just don't want people to think, like, oh, we're criticizing him. You, you could criticize every player on every snap pretty much, but you're saying right. at the end of it that you think he could be a starter. You think he's pretty far along. And, like, listen, like, you could fix, okay, you know, get an extra shuffle, an offhand jam. Like, you could – you know, play the upfield shoulder. Don't be too aggressive. Don't get your eyes back. Like that's that. That's all stuff you can fix. Where like, like you said, like I think he has that those awareness, those instincts, that the, the ability to play the ball, the size, the length. Like he he needs development, but so does everybody. Um, and I think if he was healthy, I I think I, I think like if you were to see this guy, Marcus, in, in round two, um, if he was healthy, you wouldn't be shocked. At least oh, that's no. my opinion. Like you know, right. so. By the way, I, I just I, I don't know why I just thought of this right now. Uh, somebody in the YouTube comments said you look like a bodyguard now. Um, and you, people always get people. I I, I guess I guess they're saying you're you're, you're looking pretty uh pretty pretty, pretty buff over there. Yeah, yeah, hey man. I I just thought I was. I I know you don't check the YouTube comments, but I just thrown out there. So um, that's funny. Nah, yeah, man. people people are people are giving you compliments, uh, saying <laughs> that they appreciate you on the show and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I, I think that really any rookie needs to develop. Like, what rookie goes in the, into the NFL, you know, whether it be Makai Becton, Tristan Wirfs, Joe Burrow, who is, like, you're super comfortable with day one. Like, there's not really any of them. Maybe maybe Chase Young, like, you know. Right. Even Okuda, I'm sure if we watch his film, we can criticize almost every single play. Um, but I think, you know, I, I like Hall a lot. But um, that's it. So, Marcus, any other thoughts? Um, any closing words for whatever? I, I, I'm not good at closing shows out. It's just how. It oh is. no, man! I mean, it was a uh, again. Thank you for having me on the show. But no, I mean, sure, yeah. this this is to be honest with you. You know, I I, I know we've only broken down a few people, um, and you've done the rest of them. But really, I hope you know Jet fans are excited about this draft class. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really good players, you know, that Douglas picked up, and and really they can contribute. You know if not immediately, you know, some, like somebody like Beckton, you know, it could be year two, you know, or some, you know, or, or even you just never know. But, you know, I think overall this, this is a really good class. You know, I think you got some solid players. Mm -hmm. um, I think you got some guys, you know, from a, from a mental standpoint that are needed, you know, on this team and from a mentality standpoint. And that's why I said when they picked Beckton, I was like, you know, and everybody was, you know, going <laughs> off and wanting to pick Worth. I was like, no, I like you don't understand. Like this, this is the kind of dude that the Jets need in the locker room right now. Yeah. You know, so you have to think about all of that, not just the physical ability. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what this class does. You know, once everything starts back up and they, you know, start practice and, you know, getting to see, you know, films or highlights or whatever it is that they're doing. You know, I, you know, I'll be interested to see how how these guys come out and perform. All right, we uh, we appreciate you having you on, and uh, Marcus will be back on in the future for something eventually. Um, we'll be back in a couple of days. Becton's pass sets. That's that's what we go into next, Marcus. I know you're not you're not going to be here, but uh, a lot of it was oh, Becton and his pass sets. He's terrible. Uh, I think I'm going to dispel that a little bit. He has some things to work on, but I'll get into Becton and his pass sets. So drop the reviews. Uh, I appreciate everybody for listening, and we'll see you in a couple of days.